My name is Dr. Joseph Giuliotti. I am a doctor of chiropractic, and I'm also a practitioner of the self-cultivation discipline Falun Dafa. Today, I'd like to share a beautiful story from ancient China that can speak to people from any culture and from all walks of life. In ancient times, people believed that by following the teachings of higher beings, meditating, and improving moral character, it was possible to elevate your state of mind and gradually achieve internal purity. Ultimately, it would enable a person to return to their original true self and achieve higher spiritual wisdom. This process is called Xiu Lian in Chinese, or cultivation practice. Falun Dafa is one such practice. It's an ancient self-cultivation discipline from the Buddha school. It teaches people to live by and assimilate to the universal principles of truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance. The practice includes four standing Qigong exercises and a sitting meditation, as well as a set of teachings to improve moral character. This ancient discipline believes that we all have goodness within us, and that through disciplined practice, we can refine these qualities and those around us would benefit. 100 million people in over 130 countries around the globe have benefited from daily practice. Tragically, on July 20th, 1999, the Chinese Communist regime launched a vicious, unjust persecution against Falun Dafa and its followers. 23 years have passed and practitioners continue to resist persecution non-violently by continually exposing the lies of the Communist Party and letting the world's people know the true situation. I chose today's story because it embodies the principles of faith and endurance that Falun Dafa practitioners around the world strive to live by, especially amidst an ongoing persecution. I think this story may inspire you and touch your heart. Please enjoy. Long ago in a city in China, the residents built a large, traditional-style temple. The temple was solemn and tranquil, but it lacked a Buddha statue for believers to worship. So the people invited a renowned sculptor to carve a Buddha statue so that they could express their reverence. The sculptor was moved by their sincere piety and personally went to a mountain to seek out a stone suitable for the sculpture. After much effort, he finally found a stone of great quality. It was huge, so he split it into two pieces. He selected one piece, picked up his chisel, and started carving. Ouch, it really hurts. Can you be a bit gentler? Complained the stone upon feeling the first incisions. Barely unable to bear the pain, the stone asked the sculptor, I have endured harsh mountain winds and rainstorms season after season, but I have never experienced this kind of pain before. Will your carving really transform me into a Buddha statue? Forbearance itself is a process, the sculptor replied. As long as you are determined to endure the pain, you will be born again when I finish. The pain will end then. If you have faith in me, please try to endure the pain. The stone considered the sculptor's words for a long time. I believe you, but when do you think you'll finish? It asked. Putting down his chisel, the sculptor told the stone, I've just started. You'll have to endure this for 30 days. If people aren't satisfied with my work, then I'll need to rework areas and add finishing touches. If people are satisfied with the sculpture as is, then you will become a venerated Buddha statue. The stone was silent. Fantasizing about being worshipped by thousands of people made it feel happy and complacent. But as the sculptor worked, the stone found it hard to endure the intense pain of being chiseled. Four hours later, the stone cried out, I'm dying from the pain. It's killing me. Don't use your chisel on me anymore. I can't take this anymore. Hearing this, the sculptor stopped his carving. He split the stone into four pieces of slab stone instead. The slabs were used to pave the walkway in front of the temple. The sculptor then began to carve the other piece of stone. After carving it with a sharp knife and striking it with an axe, out of curiosity, the sculptor asked the stone, Don't you feel intense pain? The first stone and I were originally one piece, so I feel just as much pain as it felt, the second stone said. However, I won't give up so easily. Why aren't you asking me to be gentler, wondered the sculptor. The stone answered, If I ask you to use less force, then the Buddha statue won't be detailed and exquisite enough. People would then ask you to work on it some more. It's better if you are able to completely finish it in one shot, so we won't waste other people's time. The sculptor listened quietly and admired the tenacity of this second piece of stone. After 30 days of chiseling, the stone became an exquisite Buddha statue. Not long after, the stately and dignified Buddha statue was placed on a sacred altar. Being both impressive and solemn, it was greeted respectfully by people far and wide. People everywhere revered it, 
Every day, more and more people came to worship and burn incense for the Buddha statue. One day, the first stone, now pavement slab, asked the statue, Why do you get to stand high above me and be worshipped by all, while I get trampled by the feet of thousands on their way to worshipping you? The second stone kindly smiled and replied, It's simple. You didn't have to endure much to become pavement. Meanwhile, I endured the hardship of countless painful blows, chisels, and cuts to become a Buddha statue. Whether a person can endure hardship or chooses to seek comfort stems from just one crucial thought. Passing up a predestined opportunity might result in endless misery. Just as the second stone had the determination to forbear the pain of being tempered and refined, the reward for doing so was better than could be expected. We all have that power within us, the power to endure hardship with grace for a greater goal. That's because the Creator is by our side. Motivated by truth, compassion, and an unwavering will of forbearance, people can better know what is right and what is wrong, and choose the right path for their own destiny. Practitioners of Falun Dafa continue to weather the storm of persecution, but even here at home, we can all choose to live a life of greater compassion and honesty. And when you really think on it, that's what our heart yearns for most.